it's time for part two. And in this part of the bus project, I'm gonna take the bus from this to this. So stick around. And I shall begin with the end cap. I may reuse this end cap to enclose the living quarters in the bus when I get to that point, but regardless of whether or not I'm gonna reuse the end cap, first I have to remove it, because it's in the way. So get your ear holes ready for some more of this impactful sound. This is heavy, oh my god, the hell? <sighs> Words. That job was really underrated. God, I have to leave that out of the video. And now for the far less fun part. The majority of this bus is held together by nice, easy to remove screws, billions of them, except for the roof. The roof is held together with rivets, not blind rivets or pop rivets, big beefy steel rivets that you have to smash together from both sides. And through experimentation, I found out the best way to remove these rivets is with a good old fashioned grinder. I tried other ways, like spot weld cutters or just regular old drill bits, but the grinder turned out to be the best and fastest way to remove these rivets, even though it's not fast at all, and it fills the air with steel dust. Anyway, let's get started on that. Don't break the glass, don't break the glass, don't break the glass, please. The end cap is now mostly off, so now I'm gonna do the part that I am not looking forward to, to get it out of the way. The rear half of this bus's roof needs to go, which means all of these rivets holding it in place need to go first. So I better start. After my full day of grinding yesterday, I'm now rested up and ready to take my top off. Of the bus, obviously. Now we shall see how easy these panels are to pop off, because aside from the rivets, there's also some adhesive under here. Oh, this is going to be about 15 times harder than I was expecting. That's annoying. All right, new plan. I'm going to try some fire. Yes, it'll destroy the paint on these panels but I might have a chance of getting them off. Maybe I can melt the adhesive. Oh, that, that was the ticket. Well, that's on fire. Start peeling it back like it's a gigantic sardine can that used to haul children. 
If you look at it from certain angles, it is a giant guillotine. Please do not slice my hand off, which is about as... Uh, drop! Panel. That's a lie and I know it. The roof panels over what will be the load bay have now been removed and it took about five times longer than I was expecting it to. Now the bus is just barely beginning to resemble its final form, which is very exciting. However, I'm very far from being done. So on to the next thing. This section of the roof over what will be the living quarters is getting a raise. And I don't mean I'm going to pay it more. I mean, it's too low as it is, and I hit my head on the support beams. And that problem's only going to get worse when I add insulation to the floor and the ceiling. That gap's just going to get smaller, and I'll basically just be rubbing my neck against the ceiling, which will be annoying. So I'm giving the roof more up. But before I can just willy-nilly chop all these supports and jack the roof up, I have to do a lot of preparation work. And the first bit of that prep work is to remove another roof panel. I know, I'm as excited about it as you are. The way I'm choosing to raise the roof on the bus is to remove this intermediate panel here that slopes down to connect the front cap of the bus with the rest of the roof, raise that entire roof section there, and then fabricate an entirely new roof panel here that slopes up to connect the front cap of the bus with the newly raised roof section. Another way I considered raising the roof was to raise the entire roof as a whole unit, including that front cap. And that method would have the bonus of not having to create a custom roof panel that slopes and has compound curves and all that complexity, but it would have the downside, since I'm raising the front cap too, of giving the bus a massive forehead, which would look weird. So I'm choosing massive engineering challenge over big forehead. Anyway, on with grinding. <laughs> With my new, let's call it a panoramic sunroof, cut into the roof of the bus, it's time to separate this roof section from anything that will prevent me from raising that roof section in the front and the back, which of course means more grinder action. In case I haven't mentioned it yet, I'm not going to be reinstalling any of the windows I've taken out of this bus because they're all garbage and they're about as airtight as a bad alibi. In their place, I'll be custom fitting some RV windows that I have yet to obtain. But that's the plan.
of tension in that. <laughs> hey, Intermission Bob here. Did you know you can support aging wheels and projects like this on Patreon? The support I get from Patreon is in part what allows projects like this to happen in the first place. YouTube ad revenue comes and goes, but the support I get from Patreon is very stable and more importantly, highly motivating. So to all my current Patreon pledges, thank you very much. And to everyone else, no pressure, you're supporting me by watching. And to my current top tier Patreon supporters, in the coming weeks I'll be sending you a small piece of the bus, maybe like one of these two pieces here, engraved with your name as a small token of my appreciation. I know it's not much, but I thought it'd be fun. Anyway, back to the project. This section of the bus roof is now separated from the rest of the bus and it's now ready to be given more up. So I'm going to be cutting the vertical supports to the roof and then raising it upwards. But how exactly am I going to be physically raising this roof upwards? This is how I made four quick and dirty jacks to raise the roof up. I just have three more to weld in place, then it'll be time to cut the vertical struts and raise the roof up. It's a really simple idea, just with some threaded rod and some other stuff. And now it's time to raise up the bus roof, little by little, one corner at a time. The roof is now raised. Look how much room I have to flail my hands around like an idiot. I'm not going to be hitting my head on anything except maybe the walls or cabinets or anything. I'm very clumsy. I rose the roof by a whole 10 inches, so now the exterior height of the bus is a full 128 inches. So I can fit the exterior height of the bus in one bite of data. I did somewhat arbitrarily choose how high to raise this roof. I just wanted to make sure that I had plenty of headroom while standing on the edge where the roof line is lower and while standing on these two boards stacked together. The reason I wanted headroom while standing on these two boards is because I plan to add about two inches of foam board insulation to the floor, making the floor thicker, obviously, and I plan to drop the ceiling by about an inch so I can have three inches of insulation on the ceiling. So when the bus is all said and done, I'll be robbed of about three inches of height. So I wanted to make sure I had plenty of headroom in the finished configuration of the bus. I didn't even account for the ceiling boards, but I gave myself a little bit of extra space, and in the middle here, it's got plenty of height anyway, and it's not like I'm ever gonna be standing on the edge here. I initially shot for eight inches, which probably would have been enough, but when I was standing on it, my head was a little, standing on the edge, my head was a little close to the ceiling, and the last thing I want is for when this bus is completed to wish I had more headroom, so I went ahead and gave myself two extra inches just to keep my future self happy. Yeah, so that's all raised up. Now it's time to weld it all together, add some structure into what is essentially a giant floating piece of metal suspended by four threaded rods. If you looked at the welds I made on my jacking points over here and thought, wow, those welds look like complete garbage. You shouldn't go near a welder, much less make anything re even remotely structural with that welder. I want you to know that these welds look like total garbage because my MIG welder ran out of shielding gas and I was running it on an extension cord that was too small and that dropped the amperage down in the MIG welder to an unusable level. My welds normally look like this that I made here for this structural component. 
It may not be the prettiest weld in the world, and I'm certainly not the most consistent or the best welder, but this will do nicely for the structure of the bus. There's lots of penetration going on here. Anyway, on with the rest of the struts. Na, 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 na. It's attached now. It only took like five hours. Now it's far from done. I still have plenty of welding and structuralizing to do to this new lifted roof section, but for reasons that will become apparent later, I'm gonna move on to something else now. And the thing I'm moving on to is dismantling and removing all of this skeleton framing. Hey, bad news Bob here. I accidentally lost the rest of the footage of me dismantling the framing back here. So it's, it's done now. Apparently I need to be more careful when deleting files from my camera. You didn't miss much. It was basically just me using this reciprocating saw and having bits of metal crash over my head. But now, unfortunately, the world will never get to see that, which makes me very sad. Anyway, mistakes happen. On to the next thing. And now it's time to structuralize the roof some more to connect these two bits back together. And just like that, it's all welded up. I feel confident in this structure. Some of this was a little more difficult, specifically on the sides here, where I had some nice curved bits of metal that had to meet up with a curve that isn't there anymore, because I raised it out of the way, so I had to throw some random bits of scrap steel in there to bridge the gaps, but I'm confident in the structure of it. Also, you can now see why I wanted to tear down the skeleton framing in the back of the bus first, because I reused some of that steel right here in this X-brace. And I'm about to use more of that old framing for this. I harvested several sections of these vertical strut pieces from the framing that I took apart in the back to use here in these gappy bits where I lifted the bus up to give the sheet metal on the outside something to attach to. So let me get to welding those in now. I think that's going to do it for part two. I feel like I accomplished quite a bit, but I have so much left to do. I did originally anticipate this project taking a couple years before it was in a mostly finished state, so well on track for that. So anyway, stay tuned for part three where I work on enclosing these living quarters, and thank you for watching. My jacket is now 50% iron filings.